Hello and welcome to End Step, the upkeep after show. Last week, we all played with custom commanders, legendary creatures that we designed ourselves to make these really weird decks, and it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, so today, we're going to be talking more about that game, more about our deck. So, uh, custom commanders, if you haven't seen that episode, uh, go watch that because otherwise this video is not going to make a lot of sense, and then come back and hear more about it. All right, so let's go around in a circle. Uh, Steven, why did you build your commander this way? Why did you choose this as your commander? How did it come about? Give us the backstory. Well, so I love uh, Brown and Shabras. And so kind of with, was it March of the Machine? When, yeah, like March the, of the Machine the, where they did the, like, the team-up like commanders. Yeah. And so I thought, I was like, well, what if I just try something like that with Brown and Shabras? And so I, this is the result. And... I felt like with Brown and Shabraz, he's the same mana cost as Shabraz, which is five, but it Brown and Shabraz has the power and toughness as if it were combined Brown and Shabraz. So three, 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 six, six. Um, but I felt like with keeping the same mana cost but upping its power and toughness right away, it would have been a little too broken if he then got more one one counters like Brown and Shabraz both do. Um, but it was nice to have Brown and Shabraz like uh, on the battlefield as one card, because then I just pay the mana for one card, and then I'll gain a life, and uh, from drawn cards, and it'll deal one damage to each opponent from discarded cards instead of having to get two cards to do that. It's just all in one card, so I thought that was pretty cool. And um, and we did see this deck back in Freedom Week back in July. And uh, this deck did win that episode. Uh, did not this episode. Y'all teamed up with me. And by that, uh, you yeah. mean that I swung at you with a massive Under army of plants. Plants, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, I, just to let the other guys kind of ramble a bit, I'll, I'll ask you a similar question and then have them answer it as well. What what challenges did you come across while building that deck? Building the deck. Well, or that, building, uh, the building commander. that commander. Building the commander. Um, was, was there any like was just, anything weird about finding the right balance or I felt up with like the it idea? was pretty straightforward because it's like I like I said I kind of just combined the two into one um and I think the main thing because I did kind of want it to get bigger but I just kind of thought keeping the same mana cost and keep like having him already as a six six would have just done a little too much and it would just have taken too much room on the card I also love the flavor text where it says look up in the sky it's a what the hell is that? <laughs> uh, so and I, so, if I did put that, then I wouldn't have had room for the flavor text, and so, and it, it probably just would have been a little too good. I think maybe if you yeah. could get more one one counters. Yeah, because part part of the requirement for this episode was that whatever we designed has to be in the realm of possibility that this is a power level that could be a real card. Um, so Jason, tell us a, a little bit about the backstory of your commander. Any any challenges designing it? Uh, how did you come up with the idea? All that. So when I was coming up with a creature to run as my commander. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, which direction I wanted to go. And I was looking, I started by looking at some concept arts um, just online in various different places, seeing, you know, what possible artwork would inspire me to think of a, a, a commander. And this isn't the art that I saw, but it was a different one. Um, I can't remember the artist's name. I, I do apologize. Uh, but I, it, it was like a swamp monster type thing that was that was kind of similar to this, and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder if there's like a like I build like a really good swamp monster, like just a big plant monster." And I was thinking about the colors, and I, and it and it dawned on me I had never made a Jun deck before, so I was like, "I'll do that." And so for the abilities, I just went, "Well, what are the what are some good things that each of these colors can do?" That isn't just absolutely broken just by itself. Uh, green searching for a land. Is it any land or a basic? It was yeah. any land. Yeah. I uh, feel like that might be a little too big for two mana. Well, that's right? Sylvan Scrying. Yeah, the Sylvan Scrying on your commander that you can use. Right, yeah. So So I maybe would have done that one as three, but yeah. More yeah, either more mana or just basic. 
red, giving creatures haste, dealing damage, and he just deals damage to players, not creatures. And then, uh, you know, I just figured giving all my creatures death touch, that was something that black does. Um, so I thought that was cool. And then I got done with those abilities, and I was like, it just doesn't seem complete. Like, it didn't... I wanted to add more flavor to it because of the type of creature that I created. And so with this last ability, with the uh, uh, pay a black, a red, and a green, and return a land you control to its owner's hand, uh, he becomes a legendary land with indestructible, and you can tap him to add a mana of any color, and he loses all his other abilities. And when I envision that, I just envision, like, you know, this, this being in some sort of danger and uh, needs to hide and protect itself and so it recedes into the land of which it is made and so just it just becomes part of the land to keep itself safe i thought that was very flavorful and it was very cool as far as building the deck the most difficult part of that for me was just figuring out the theme because all of these abilities individually they're just things that that color does well but i wasn't sure exactly what theme i wanted to go with and I just kind of had this idea of like reanimating creatures. So I guess, I guess a follow-up question is now having played it, would you try focusing it more in a certain direction or do you kind of like it as just like a Jund good stuff? Cause that is very Jund. It's, it's Jund. It's, I, I kind of just like the Jund good stuff. I yeah. kind of just, I kind of do. Nothing says Jund, like no synergy, just all the good cards in these colors. Nothing says Jund more than that <laughs> uh i like it yeah uh preston tell us tell us uh, the story behind your commander what challenges did you face designing it uh what what gave you the idea to do it okay so uh i don't remember how long it was especially by the time this airs but so i remember talking about when we did the uh, lord of the Rings set i really love the shadow of games shadow of mordor shadow of war and one of the reasons i love those games so much is that they really make you appreciate the orcs of middle earth a lot more than the movies or original source material did they give them a bunch of different personalities different abilities like they do a bunch of different cool stuff so when the set came out some of the orcs that they made were okay but i wasn't really huge on any of them i wanted to build around one but i didn't think any were quite strong enough so that's mostly why i went with ratbag and ranger here who are two of the orcs from the uh, game series uh and so their abilities of uh, sacrificing another orc and then getting some kind of bonus, that's pretty true to how the games play out. So you can sacrifice orcs to get information. Uh, when your orcs beat another orc, your orc gets stronger, stuff like that. Uh, you can take control of orcs and make your own army. So that that's basically what I was going for with the design here. Why did you make it rainbow? Part of that was just because I wanted to have all the colors because uh, I wanted to use my sliver deck as like a basis as part of that to sort of help me out a little bit hmm. but also like with the orcs there's a bunch of different things they can do and i wanted to like show off as many of those as i could realistically on a single magic card so i thought wooberg would be the greatest way to do that yeah uh and then for me um mine was pretty simple i basically took a commander that already existed uh and then i just switched out two colors so that i could uh play different cards that you wouldn't necessarily see together in the same deck um i did try making it a smidge stronger so i changed the activated ability slightly to where it's worded that if someone steals my creature i can get it back it can blink itself uh, so i changed the wording slightly and then i also gave it lifelink uh which i think that might have pushed it a little bit i don't think that was too far or anything but i think like when i've play tested it, i was like ah that might be too much but the reason I gave it Life Link was to play off of Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino is uh, a, a all-star from old formats from a few years ago. Uh, and he has a really good enter the battlefield effect. And uh, part of that is gaining life. And so I wanted to put that in this deck. Uh, and it won't go, be able to go in like a rune deck because it you know doesn't fit with the colors. So that was kind of uh, my idea there. Um, I think I probably could have, again, probably tweaked it, made some of it. I think there was a way to make it more fair because it is five mana do nothing and then two mana to do the thing. So I feel like I could have been more creative than just making a new version of Rune. I probably could have found a different way to do it, but 
um, yeah, that, that's where we are. Um, Steven, we have seen your deck before, and you did win with it. Uh, and because you're drawing and discarding so much, between that and having it already seen on the show, we have seen a lot of the deck, but is there anything specific about it that is cool that we haven't seen either of the times you've played the deck? I can't remember if I played Echo of Eons that first game. Um, that shuffles everyone's hands and graveyards back into their libraries, and then they each player draws seven cards. Which is, of course, great with Bralin, because then you'll get to gain a bunch of life also. And then, um... So, that's just a really fun card, especially because I'm putting so much in my graveyard, and then it's like, oh, well... If I get pretty low, then Echoes of Eons. And it has flashback. Mm -hmm. So it can be in my graveyard. And it's less mana for its flashback cost. Um, and so that was that's a pretty big one. Um, that's just really fun. And can kind of like just keep the train going in case I do get close to like, you know, milling myself or something. That's the main one. Jason, is there any cool tech in your deck that you didn't get to show off? You saw for the most part what my deck wants to do, but I would say two of probably the best cards that will win me the game if I, you know, one will help set me up to win the game and one if I have a pretty good setup, it will win me the game. Uh, and that's uh, Ghoul Caller Gissa. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the good one, the OG one. Uh, pay a black, tap, sacrifice another creature, and you make X 2-2 two, two zombies where X is the sac sacked creature's power. And then you have Avatar of Slaughter. Which, this card is really cool. It's really fun. And I would like to play it <laughs> in a game. And uh, it's all creatures have double strike and attack each combat if able. It's just chaos. It's that just, chaos. let's do as much damage to everyone in this in this rotation as possible. I did used to have that in my chaos deck. And then it was, like, maybe too chaotic. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Preston, what about you? Do you have any cool tech? Uh, I think the two I most want to show off are the Ozolith, which I... I love this card. I've never had a chance to use it in a deck, so I was excited to put it in yeah. there, uh, letting me save any of my counters that I put on Ratbag and Ranger or any of my other creatures. Yeah, got a little, got a little hair on that one. Thank you. All right, uh, and then for winning the game, I was hoping to maybe hit this guy, Orcus Siege Master. He's a zero five 5 with Trample. Uh, other Orcs and Goblins I control have Trample, and then whenever he attacks, he gets to basically copy the biggest power I have, so... If I had been able to hit him, I might have been able to win, close out that game at some point. Yeah. Uh, for for me, uh, like I said, Siege Rhino is uh, the the re main reason I wanted, wanted to do it because uh, when I first got into Magic, Siege Rhino was the big deck uh, across formats, modern, standard. It was the deck. And uh, I've never got to play it in, in uh, Commander, so that was the main reason I wanted to build this deck. So for four mana, four, five, trample, enters the battlefield, each opponent loses three, and I gain three which is really fun if you get to flicker it or whatever. Um, and then the other card that uh, is really cool that I can't put in Rune, but I can in this color combination, is Wernog Writer's Chaplain, uh, which is the in-universe version of one of the uh, Stranger Things cards. I don't remember. I think it's Will. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, but for one in a black, it's a 1-2 human. When it enters, the enters or leaves the battlefield, each opponent may investigate. Each opponent who doesn't loses a life, and I investigate X times, where X is 1 plus the number of opponents who investigate this turn. Um, and that's really good in this deck because it, it's flickering, so it's going to be entering and leaving the battlefield. Uh, and then... Assuming I get to investigate quite a bit, I'm going to end up with a lot of clue tokens. And I will say that's like the main weak spot of this deck is I probably didn't add enough card draw to the deck. As you saw when I played Gaunti and I was like stealing cards from people, I was trying to find card draw. Um, and so that's part of why this is so good is because it, it, it can let me refill my hand uh, later later on. There, so, th there was one card that I wanted to point out that I forgot about. Uh, it's Shark Typhoon. Oh, sure. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily one of the, like, best cards in the deck, but, like, it is it is good, <laughs> and it'll help me... Uh, Close out the game. It'll help me, like, create more tokens. And it's just um, a very Stephen card. And I just like it. And shark, flying, more Flying Sharks. They should do a secret lair where they re-release that card and just call it Sharknado. Yeah, I agree. They, yeah. Um, so, does anyone have a favorite moment from the game? Jason saving me <laughs> with that fog. That was pretty dope. Yeah, I no actually one... enjoyed that, because, like, nobody thought I was going to save Preston. 
Nobody no. thought I was going to say first. I still I'm, don't entirely know why you did. <laughs> uh, because I needed you to either get Morgan out or what we ended up needing, get Steven out. Because, you know, we were we were sitting at like, tw- I was at what, 22? You were at 25? Yeah. Something like that. You were at what? He was 31? a little better. Yeah. And he had 48? 49. We were at 49? It, was, it was 48. So, yeah, it's like, okay. I, I was actually probably lower than that. I was probably, well, I don't know. No, you were definitely higher than us for a decent chunk of that early game. But oh, still, in the early game, yeah. yeah but still, yeah. like you know, so I, when you swung on that at Preston, it, it would have killed him. I was like, I can't let, I can't afford to let Preston die because there's absolutely no chance I win this game if I don't have Preston here helping me keep these two in check. Uh, I'll tell you what my favorite part of the game wasn't was you <laughs> uh, overloading Cyclonic Rift because I, I had, love that card because I w- I was watching the board and I knew that my life total was low. You guys had more creatures. You guys had the ways to knock me out of the game. But I had, like, three ways between cards on my battlefield and in my hand. I had, like, three ways to not die, no matter how the attacks went. The one thing I couldn't do anything about was the overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Like, even, like, just a board wipe would have been like, well, now he can't kill me because he doesn't have creatures. So, like, literally the only card that would have led to my demise was overloaded Cyclonic Rift. So, that was sad. Uh, 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 Something else that would have been funny is I had uh, the card I stole from jason that you guys didn't get to see was a card that said steal any card from any graveyard and i could have just <laughs> brought a venture of send a card back uh which would have been pretty fun uh did anyone else have a favorite moment the fog the fog moment was pretty iconic no one no one expects it no one expects a fog i mean when i realized i had the exact amount of mana to kill preston yeah uh what about an mvp of the game i think wait time out I say we all say what we think the MVP card of the game is on three. I right, ready? One, two, three. Orcus Bowmaster. Uh, <laughs> did you say island? <laughs> he did that on purpose to ruin it because he's a loser. He didn't, he didn't even say anything. I was actually going to say my uh, green land that lets all of my lands tap for any color. If oh, I hadn't got that, I would have been out of that game yeah. like 30 world, turns ago. The world, world tree. tree, yeah. yeah. The world tree is probably, yeah. That was good uh, yeah, that card did a lot. Yeah, that was. The Orcus Bowmaster. Yeah, Bowmaster. Yeah, I mean, Bowmaster. the Orcus Bowmaster, I think, kept me from winning the game. Because it knocked out before I could come back to me and grow my plant tokens. You took out half of them. Uh, which Over half. Because you went back to your turn, you had five. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I guess it was more than half. Which was it, and you were, and you were dealing, fault too. And I think you took out a couple other creatures, and you were hitting people a little bit in the face here and there. Yeah, um, it, it gave did, you it, it gave you a giant beater that ended up killing me in the end. So the the bowmaster, yeah, I think is probably work. the MVP of the game. And even if you do your thing that was triggering the bowmaster, if the bowmaster's not out here, nobody's taking damage. Those plant tokens aren't going anywhere. Yeah, I did. I did have my. Uh, swords to plowshare pretty early in the game, and I did think about getting rid of it, and I just I never did. I probably should. Uh, uh, well, eh, I don't know. No, well, again, no I think <laughs> well, I think you though, teamed Orcus... up enough times with it that it was kind of in your interest to keep it around for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah like true. like I said, I think the bowmaster is what kept me from winning the game. I think I would have clobbered you all had you had it not stuck around as long as it did. So I think that was probably the the right decision. But uh, does anyone have any closing thoughts about? the game their decks the uh experiment that is making custom commanders do you recommend the audience give this a try uh any closing thoughts i think if you have enough mana to where making a deck with a custom commander won't hurt you too badly or if you just have enough extra cards i would say do it otherwise it might be a little tricky to build a deck that you can't play with a lot of people unless you get them to say yes beforehand Right. But if you can do that, I think it's absolutely a great idea. And like in my situation, like I'm basically just taking my partners and combining it into one card. I, the yeah, deck you're is, taking a the deck. The deck is ninety eight percent the same. Yeah. I switched a couple lands out. That was basically it. Yeah, and this wasn't too hard for me either because this I'm I'm building a rune deck right now anyways. So it was just like I switched taking out the blue cards, adding black cards and Boom, you also have like a ten thousand card collection. So. Yeah, I have a I have a decent collection too. Uh, I recommend it for sure. Just I mean, but I will say, if you do decide to make a custom commander, don't put so many words on it. Yeah, maybe, so wordy. Maybe don't put so many words on it like Preston and I did. Uh, is we my were deal- just trying to capture the heart and spirit of wizards. We okay? were. Is mine the but only we one? We should have used less words. Is mine the only one with flavor text? 
Well, yeah. ours has too much other text for flavor text. Again, I could I could have fit flavor this text. This is pretty on mine. flavorful. But it's last abilities. It's got a lot of flavor in it for me. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of NSEP. So let us know in the comments. What do you guys think about this idea? I, I feel like that this might be a polarizing episode of Upkeep and NSEP. Like some people are like, ooh, that's kind of weird. But uh, let us know what you think, uh, if this is something you would be willing to try. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe for more Magic the Gathering related content. We are very excited because the next episode of Upkeep coming out a week from today is... Uh, uh, the Christmas episode, and we are doing a five-player Secret Santa game with all of the five main guys who are on this show. We all made a deck for one of the other people. We're going to gift them to each other, and we're going to duel it out. Um, I'm really excited for it. So I hope you guys are excited for it too. So make sure you subscribe so you see that when it comes out, and uh, we'll see you guys later.